Welcome to part three of this order management series. In this video, we are going to be implementing the data schema that we created in last week's video, part two, and we are going to be using Smart Suite to create the database and store the information for our order management system. Make sure you check it out. As mentioned, we are going to be using Smart Suite to implement this order management tool. If you do not have an account already, you can get started for free. There's a link in the description below. And from here, we are going to be building out the data schema that we outlined last week. As a quick refresher, here's the data schema that we created. And for the most part, we only focused on the linked relationship fields. We added a few other fields throughout some of these tables, but for the most part, we will be adding additional fields as to what you see in here. There's going to be a number of different tables that we need to create. I like to create all of the tables to get started, or at least most of them, and then we can start adding in the fields for each individual table from there. We'll go back into Smart Suite here. First thing I like to do, basically I will delete all of these different fields across the top here. If we need them, we can add them back in. And we can go into here. The first table we're going to create is sales order. I will label it sales order here. And there's a few options that we can select. We'll just change this to order. And we can click out of that. And the reason I like to delete all of the fields is it makes it easier to just duplicate. And we don't bring in these fields that aren't necessary across other tables. If I'll go in. I'll click this duplicate table and I'll flip back into our schema and I can look here. Sales order items is the next one. And I'm just going to label this SO items to keep it a little bit shorter and we'll click duplicate table. If I can click into this one, go back into the settings here and here I will just label this items. Same thing. We'll go in, do inventory and then inventory items. And I'm just going to jump ahead here and quickly add each of these tables and then we'll get into it. Now that I've added all the tables, I'll quickly review them here. We have sales order, we have sales order items, we have inventory or products, we have inventory items, we have part stock, purchase orders, and we have purchase order items. I'm going to go back into the sales orders and we're going to start here and build out the schema and add in all the fields that are relevant to the specific table. We flip back into the sales order and we can see there's a few things that we need to get started. There's going to be some additional information as well as I mentioned. I'm going to quickly add in a few things here. We got customer name, customer email, order date, and delivery date. I'll just go in here. And again, I also mentioned in the data schema video, so part two, that it might be a good idea to actually create a customer table and link it to the sales orders. But that's not the part we're going to focus on so much here at this point in time. I'm simply going to add a text field and I'm just going to call this customer name and we can add in the field here and I'll click into this one. I'll search for an email and we can relabel this to customer email and a nice thing within smart suite, you have a setting down here. That's number of entries allowed. If you just want to store one email address per order per customer, you can do that, but you could also add multiple if you want for simplicity. I'm just going to keep it as a single email address stored on the customer. And then I'm going to bring in a couple date fields here. I'm going to have a order date. This was the date that they actually submitted the order and we can switch this to today. Actually, in this case, what I'm going to do, I will leave the default date as today and I'll do quote date because what we're going to do here is we're going to run our sales orders we're also going to store our quotes within this. Essentially what's going to happen is once we've entered an order or a quote into the system, then from here, if the customer decides to go ahead with it, we can flip the status to ordered. We'll add this as quote date, and then we can go in here and duplicate the field and do order date. If they've decided that they want to place the order, we will add in a date at this point in time. We can duplicate the field. I will click into it here, go to default, and I will turn off the default date. I'll update that one. And one other thing that we want to do, and I'm just going to show you quickly, there's a few options. We have dates, we have date ranges, and we have due dates. If we wanted, we could possibly add the delivery date as a due date. I'm going to add in a due date. 
and I have to link it to a status field. So that's something that we'll have to add in here in a moment. I'm going to bring in a status as well. And we'll just call this order status and we'll have to add in a couple options. So this can be a quote. We'll add in a new field and we'll flip this to ordered. Maybe we'll want something like in process or something along those lines so that we know that it's being built and then we can do ready and we can do delivered or shipped or whatever you want to do here. And the default is a quote. So that's good to go. And we can add that field in. Now I'll flip into the due date here and it's automatically linked this field to the order status. There's a couple additional fields that I will come back to here in a moment, but I want to look at the sales order ID. This is the primary key. I'm going to go into here to auto generated and I will change this to sales order ID and the sales order ID. I'm going to bring in the customer name will be the first thing. Maybe I'll bring in the quote date and I will bring in the auto number field as well. And that automatically gets added. If I click into this fields to display, there's an auto number that's hidden here. When I create a record and I will do that, I'll just add in name. And you can see here that the quote date got automatically added as today. The status was updated to quote as well. Now you can see here that the customer, John Smith, this is our unique order ID with a quote date of June 11th. And here's the auto number that gets assigned to it. Back to this total amount and sales order items. The total amount is actually a roll up of all of the linked line items that are associated to it. We will have to come back to that and add that in after once we've added the linked relationship between the sales order and the sales order items. Basically what this is, the sales order is the shell of the order. That's where you add all the top level information like customer name, email, quote date, the status overall. But the sales order items is actually each individual line item. In this case, we're a custom furniture manufacturer and things that we're going to be selling is something like a chair, tables, bar, countertops, those types of things. What we're going to do is we're going to go over to this, add another field. We're going to bring in a linked record. We will link this to the sales order items. And we do want to allow linking to multiple records because within an individual sales order, we can have any number of products. I click add field here. It will show me the link to sales order items. If I go click into sales order items, I can go to fields to display and I will bring this into my view as well, which brings a link back to the sales order. To start, we're going to keep the sales order items very simple. Here's the link to the sales order. That's the overall quote or order. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to add a link to the inventory or the product. We'll bring in another linked record. And what this essentially is a junction table. This is where we're linking two different tables into one. We're linking the sales order and we're linking the actual inventory of the products that we're selling onto this individual line item. If I click into this, I can go down to the inventory and products. And in this case, we are only going to link one line item to one product. So we can turn this off. I'll add the field. And now we can see have a link to the product. As I go along, I'm just going to add in some sample data to keep it really simple. One last thing I do want to add quickly is the number or the quantity. And we can change that to quantity similar to the sales order. We want to update this primary key or primary field. We'll just call this sales order items ID. Again, I like to use the auto generated method. What I will do here is link to the sales order and I'll also link to the product and then click update field. If we go into group, we can do group by and we can group by the sales order. Now, when I click in here to add a sample record, we're going to link to this sales order that we created, and we're going to link to some additional products once we get them added into the inventory over here. If I drag this out, we can see I have a record ID as John Smith based off of the sales order information. And then it will also show up and display the actual product that we're adding to this line item. I'm going to go into the inventory and products, and we're going to start building out this table. I want to 
bring in the link to the sales order items into this view so that we have something to link to. There's going to be a number of fields that we add in here, but to keep it simple and so that I can work back into the sales order items, I'm just going to add the necessary fields. What we're going to do here is bring in a text field and we can just call this product name. Maybe you have some sort of SKU number or ID associated with it. I'm just going to simply use an auto number. I can bring that in by clicking into the fields to display, go auto number. I'm just going to change this to product number. I'll just leave it as is, but if you click into it, you have some settings here that you're able to change to make it work for your business. If we go into here, last thing I want to do, I want to go to, into this auto generated again. I'm going to bring in the product name and the product number as well. Here we can call this product ID, update the field. Now we're going to add in a few example products. I'll just do a few really simple things here. I'll just go with chair, and I guess we could have different styles of chairs. You could add additional fields here to display as much information relevant to this specific product as you want. But I'm gonna keep it really simple. For this tutorial, we'll go chair, table, and we'll go with a bar. Now you can see here that we have our product ID with chair and the product number as well. It makes it a little bit easier to find. So for example, let's say we have an additional chair and we want to be able to have some sort of way to identify that it is a different chair. We're gonna have chair one and we'll have a chair number four, for example. If we go back into the sales order items now, I can go in here and now this link to this John Smith sales order. Maybe we want to bring in a chair. Maybe he wants to get four of them. You're looking at one table. I'm going to flip back into the products quickly here. And something I'm going to update is change this to a kitchen chair to add a little more contact. And we've got a kitchen table. Now, in the sales order items, this is each individual line item associated to the sales order or the quote in this case at this point in time. We can see here that it's brought in the and connected the sales order. We've got four kitchen chairs that we're quoting and we have one kitchen table. One thing I'm going to add in here really quickly is a single select field and I'm going to do archive and active and I'll label this green make this one red by default all items will be active i'll just change this to status and i'll make all of these items active for the time being but basically what we're going to do here now is add in a currency field this is the price per item or per product here we can go in and add the prices now the way that this is set up let's say this kitchen chair now has a cost of 200 dollars but you're still in the process of building and all of your historic or previous orders that you've created, you don't want to come in here and just change the price to $200 because then all of your previous data is going to get messed up. What you want to actually do would be to flip this into that archive status and then recreate this kitchen chair with the new price. Now that we have the price in here, we can go back to the sales order items and we can use a roll up type function. And now there's a few different ways to do this but I'm just going to use a roll up, just use the max roll up function here. And I'm going to make sure I select the inventory products and bring in the price here. Now I can add that in and just add in the price. Make sure you display it as unit price because now we've got a total of four chairs at a unit price of $150. So we can use a formula field and we can go total. There is an advanced editor formula option, but this is really easy. This one's just quantity and we're going to multiply it by the unit price. And for a little more context, maybe we'll call this item total. We can see now that we have an item total of $600 for the four chairs and just one table is being purchased, a total of $500. That is the line item totals. And if we go into the sales order now, and I'll add in another roll-up field. We'll leave this as link to sales order items. We'll want to select the item total and we'll use a sum function in this case. I'll click add field. We'll do a total cost here. 
Now we're gonna see that the total cost is $1,100, which is correct, because we've got $600 total here, plus the $500 total for the table. This is a really good start. In the sales order, we have most of the information we need here. In the sales order items, we now have most of the information that we need there. One thing I do wanna do is add another roll-up at this level. And how this is going to work is we'll bring in the roll-up and we want to link back to the sales order items. And we're going to bring in the quantity. And we're gonna sum up that total quantity, change this to being quantity sold. That's what this field represents. That checks out. So we can see here that for the kitchen chairs, we sold a total of four of them. There's only been one order so far, so that makes sense. But what this is going to allow us to do, and I'm gonna get into it in part four of this series where we build out the remaining four tables here. This will allow us to determine the quantity sold of a specific product. And then as this information flows throughout the system, we'll also be able to see how many products and items that we're able to build based off of the parts that we have in stock. And again, that's coming into play in part four of this series. That's it for part three of the order management series. We built out the data schema, or at least started to build out the data schema that we designed and created in part two. In this video specifically, we took a look at the sales order, sales order items, and linked it to the inventory and the products. In part four, we're gonna look at building out the rest of the solution, being the inventory items, the parts, the stock, and the purchase orders. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to get more tutorials in the future and so that you're notified of part four when it's released.